Hey guys, Krista Jones here from Davy and Krista, where we help businesses build brands that book. Today, we're going to be chatting all about website footers. First, we're going to jump into a few key elements of footers that we always include in every footer we build. And then I'm going to show you how to actually build a footer in Show It. And if you stick around, you're going to see how I include mailing list signups in a footer, which is probably one of our most frequently asked questions. So when we're building footers, we generally like to include these five elements. First is the navigation. So a lot of times I'll just copy the main navigation from the header and then repeat it in the footer. And depending on how big the website is and if I need to include a few extra pages in the footer, that might be where I include them because footers generally have a little more space to include a lot of links, whereas header space is typically more limited. So we'll often put our most important elements up in the header. And then if we need more space to list additional pages, we'll include those in the footer. Second is social media links. In the past, we've experimented with putting social media links up at the very top of a page, but we've found that when you have them at the top of this page, it's easy for people to click on those pages, head over to their Instagram, for example, maybe see that they have a few notifications and then never come back to your site. So we definitely think it's awesome to include links to your social media. We always do that on every website that we build, but we think it's a better spot to put them in the footer than up in the header. Third element that we always include in a footer is the copyright details, the site credit details, any links to the privacy policy or legal statements that need to be included, the footer is a great spot to include these. Not only because they aren't quite as important as some of the other elements on a site, they're kind of like the thing that you need to include, but the footer ensures that they show up on every single page, which is important if you're going to display something like terms and conditions or a privacy policy. Fourth item that we like to include in a footer is a mailing list sign up. We're not big fans of just doing a sign up for my list kind of call out to encourage people to join your list. We see a lot higher conversion rates when we do something like download my free guide. Since the footer shows up on every page and it's something that people get to once they've read all of the other content on a page, the footer is a great spot to to include a lead magnet, especially if it's a lead magnet that you haven't promoted higher up on the page. And then the last item that I like to include in footers is a back to the top button. If your pages aren't really long, if they're only a few sections and you don't feel like people are kind of scrolling forever to get to the footer, you might not need a back to the top, but we're big fans of longer pages as opposed to more pages. And so if you're scrolling through a really long site, sometimes it can be a good idea to add a back to the top button to help people ba get back to the top of the page. Let's Let's dive into the tutorial. So I have a website template pulled up and show it. This is St. Jean. It is one of our new spring lines. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. You can see here, this is actually how I built our footer and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Side note, if you want to learn how to add an Instagram feed that pulls in your images automatically from Instagram, check out our YouTube video on Instagram feeds for show it. That'll show you how to use the newer shower feature that auto pulls in images, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm going to start by adding a blank canvas and I'm going to drag it up under the Instagram. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to give it a background color just so that it stands out a little bit. So I'm going to choose option five for my color palette. And then I'm going to come up here to my header to this top level navigation. And I'm just going to copy all my elements. So command C on a map and then come down to my new canvas and then command V right here. I'm also going to repeat the site title in this, but if you had a logo, you could repeat your logo down here or you could put in a different logo variation. So if you have a logo that has a few different variations, you could do something like that. Next up, if I wanted to add some sort of image like this, I would go to my media library, find an image I like, and then I would add this to the page. So I'm going to lock this over on the side. And if I want, if you want to make sure that it's exactly on the top and the side, you can come over to size and position and make sure that things are set to zero. So I want that to be zero and I want that to be zero. And then I want this one to be locked over to the side and I'm gonna make it a little bit taller. Next, I'm gonna move this down so that it's under my navigation elements right now just so that I can grab home. And I'm gonna start lining things up and then I don't have a contact button or contact link so I'm gonna add contact. And then I'm gonna start styling these. So I want these to be left aligned and I'll make sure all of these are left aligned. On show it, you can copy styles between elements. So if you hit command C on, let's see, say, 
home, for example, and then you click on another one that doesn't have these styles, if you hold Command, Shift, and V at the same time, it'll paste those styles and then it's just a little bit less work. And then I'm gonna start selecting these items right here and aligning them on the top just to ensure that everything is neat and orderly and easy to browse. So we'll do something like that. If I wanted to add in a line like this to break things up, show it has a line tool, so I can just add a line this way. I'll start off by making it longer. I'm gonna make it one pixel tall and I need to set this to lock. Same with all of these. We want all of these to lock to the side so that when you preview it, which I'll show you in an example in a second, they're all kind of set over on the side by that image and not just centered. And let me show you what that looks like. So uh, preview and you'll see that the line just like this one expands to be bigger and then we have these items in right here i think i'm actually going to need to set this line to be this way in order to get it to expand on both sides if i wanted to pull this guy over and have him left aligned i could do that and then i can left align this one too select everything and then align to the left just to make sure that it's all even and i'll pull this one down so this button i actually have up at the top so i'm just going to grab it again just to save us a little time and then copy it down here and if you have any other like buttons in your site you could do the same thing and that would help ensure that the buttons are a little more consistent throughout the whole site and then I'm gonna give my button a fill color and no border and I'll make it green I'm gonna make this one white another thing it looks like I need to do if I wanted to copy this exactly is add some text right here so I'll copy this one since it's also italic and then I'll paste this in here and I'll make this a little bit bigger so maybe 20 or 19 and we'll say find your way around at this point i think it's probably a good idea to turn on our mobile and just take a look at it because it's probably going to be a little crazy with everything overlapping i'm going to make our mobile canvas bigger and give it a background and i'm going to just start cleaning things up so probably don't need this image on mobile just because it's kind of like a secondary fun element so i'm going to hide that one i'll make this line less thick so let's make this one pixel instead of three and pull it down and then these navigation links were turned off in the header because we had a separate mobile navigation area. So I will need to turn them on on mobile and pull them down here. And I'll just start making these a little bit bigger and order organizing them. So I can copy styles between desktop and mobile as well. So I could do copy and then paste paste. That's our third one. I actually might align everything to the left and then same with this title up here. So I'm gonna make this box shorter so that I can center everything and that one shorter. Now if I select everything again, I can center it and I can start cleaning this up. So I don't want this box to be bigger than it needs to be because it's a, if it's covering other text items right here, those links aren't gonna be clickable. So that is something that I wanna change. This text box needs to just, just be a little big, bit bigger in order to avoid the wrapping. And if everything was the same size of a text box, I could drag and select it and do this auto distribute. That's actually not too bad. I think this one just needs to come down a little bit and it looks like I need to turn on my contact button. So if I wanted to turn on some of these other elements right here, I could for demo purposes, just to keep this video from being too long, I'm gonna not do all of that, but you could add all of those extra elements if you want. Hide that for now. And then if I wanted to do links to social media, I could do that as well. So I'm gonna copy this line and then turn off the horizontal locking because we don't need that anymore. And I'll make it shorter. Let's do the length here. So let's make it 400. And I'm just gonna repeat what I've done. So that helps keep styles consistent and it saves me time. So I'll drag and select like these four or five items right here and then copy and paste them and move them over here as a unit. And so we could start doing Instagram, um, and then we would add a click action. Instead of going to a page, we'd add a click action to a URL. And we want it to open in a new window. And we'll do the same thing for all of these. So this is gonna go to a URL and this could go to Facebook, whatever social media platforms you want to. These, I'm just gonna double check them, but they should all be going to the correct pages except for the contact one because we added that one later. We're getting there on, on this list. To do a credit like this, I'm going to add a rectangular box and I'm gonna make it span the whole width of the page. So something like this. And I'm gonna make this one bigger because I'm gonna need it to add a mailing list in a minute. So come down here and I'm gonna copy this line right now 
and then paste it down here just so I can kind of get my spacing right. And then I'm gonna just copy some text so that we have something to start with. So I'll copy this one, copy, paste. If you do option G on a Mac, that'll type this copyright symbol. So 2022 St. Jean Photography, all rights reserved. If you need to link to a privacy policy page, you could do that. You could select something here. If you need to link off somewhere, link to it. Let's see, I do have one in here. So select. Another thing that we need to do if we just copied one of these items is turn off a click action. Otherwise those internal links are not gonna work. I'm gonna make this white and I'm gonna make the links white. I'm gonna pull it down here and I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. So something like that. And I'm gonna start working on the stacking for this too because in order for things to be accessible, you wanna make sure that they're stacked correctly. So I'm gonna grab these two items and I'm just gonna pull them way down to the bottom of all of my canvases. And then this one is ready to come back up to the top because it's the first leftmost item in the footer. And then these two are gonna go next. So we'll do St. Jean, tagline, love our work, all of that'll come next. So text and then button, and we'll make sure that it's all in order as well. And then we're gonna come back to mobile because we're gonna have to clean up on mobile a little bit. So we don't want that because it covers up all of our links and all the work that we just did. So let's make this skinny and down at the bottom. If I make the box a little bit bigger, I can probably easily grab it. So we'll do that. We'll make it white and just kind of repeat the settings that we did on desktop we need to set the link colors link colors and then if i move it down here it'll be a bit easier and then i'm going to drag and select this uh, this text right here move it down centered on mobile so it's a little bit easier to see and then the last couple of things i'm going to do i'm going to add a mailing list link and i'm going to add a back to the top button so i'm going to copy this line one more time and then bring it down here. I'll copy some text right here. Well, let's say we wanted to have a free guide and then I want this text to be italic. So we could do like the name of our lead magnet right there and I'll make that smaller. I could add in an arrow. So I'll come down to icons, make it black and then come in here and find the arrow. So maybe something like this. And then from here, you're gonna drag and select the text and do a click action to either a page within your site that you have added a landing page form or if you're using something like Flowdesk or ConvertKit they have landing pages within the platform that I'm a big fan of linking to just because it's so streamlined especially if you're doing Flowdesk I would do a link to the URL of the landing page in Flowdesk and that's going to ensure that it's easy for people to see the form I think it works better that way and hopefully you build your list a little bit better that way but if you wanted to do a landing page within your site we actually have a free template that you can download we'll link down below and it looks something like this so you could customize it to match your site if you come back to your footer down here we can link to that this way so configure link to the page and then i would rename it so instead of saying landing page it's the name of your guide so it's just a little bit more specific last thing we're going to do is add a back to the top button so i am going to add some text so we'll just start with this paragraph text and i just happen to have a fun script built in so i'm going to use that one but you could use something that um, matches your site. I'm gonna turn it a little bit and I'll kind of like nestle them together and pull them up here. And then I'm gonna add a click action to top of the page. If I was doing this for real at this point, I'd wanna hop over to mobile and clean up mobile and make sure that that looks good. But in the interest of time, I'm gonna show you how I wrap up the footer. So last thing I do is I turn, is I'm gonna name it. So we'll name this footer. And then I'm going to convert it to a site canvas. And then from here, I can copy it and then go into all of my other pages and start to paste it in. It's already on this page, so it wouldn't let me paste it in here, but I could come into any other page, paste the footer below, and then that ensures that I have the same footer on every page of the site. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Make sure that you hit like and subscribe on this video to get updates about future videos we release. And thanks for joining me.